Hey everybody, it's Betsy. Welcome back to my channel. This is Emmy, my hook, and I. And today we are going to talk about how to wind a hank into a center pull skein ball thing. <laughs> Super technical. And since I have multiple chronic illnesses, I am always looking for ways to make things easier for myself. If you've been around my channel for a while, you will know that in addition to myalgic encephalomyelitis, I have postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And that's just a big, long, fancy acronym to mean that when I stand up, my heart rate skyrockets so i try to do things where i can keep my hands below my shoulders not have to reach above my head so when i was looking for a yarn swift i was uh not too keen on the umbrella style because i just pictured myself holding a skein forever trying to enlarge the umbrella swift so i found this amish swift which is actually called a tabletop Swift. It's going to sit right here next to my ball winder on top of the table so it also doesn't have to hook onto the table, which is good because sometimes you can damage your table with things that screw onto it. So today we're going to wind this Harvest Worsted Earth Yarn. This came out of the September Yarnier box. If you remember that video, I will put a link in the description on that below. So before we get into this hank, we're going to assemble our Swift. And the way that you do that, it comes with two stand pieces, two long pieces with holes for pegs, four long dowels, and one shorter dowel. And this one is made by Stanwood Needle Crafts. I got it on Amazon and you will see a link for that below. It is affiliated, um, but nobody has paid me to give this uh, review of it. I am doing this of my own will and volition. And uh, I do appreciate it if you use those affiliate links though. So, as you just saw, you put these two together like so. And the shorter dowel is actually the one that's going to go in the middle here. And then you are going to take the one with the um, indention and put that on first. And the other one where the indention is on the bottom on second. All right. Slide that a little away from me because it is going to spin like an umbrella swift. First, let's talk about undoing this hank. Because if you don't do this with a, a gentle amount of care, you can end up with a hot mess real quick. So the first thing we're going to do is cut off this tag. And generally, these are held together with one end being poked through the other. So we're just going to undo the hank like so and let it untwist the way it wants to untwist. There we go. All right. At this point, I'm just going to lay it over and see if I can find the two ends. Sometimes those are tied together in a hank. Sometimes they're just sitting here willy nilly, but there is an inside of the circle one and there is an outside of the circle one. It looks like that is just a tie, not an end. Let's see here. So is that one. Trying my best not to twist the skein up. That's, oh, looks like that has one end to it. Let's see, there's the other. Okay. So, I don't like to cut my strings that are holding the yarn together here in the skein yet until I get it on the swift because that way it keeps it together and keeps it from getting tangled while I am transferring it to the swift. 
So I have found my ends. I'm going to make a note of where this is. I'm not going to cut it until I get it on the swift. And usually I just guesstimate which peg I'm going to start these in first. I'm going to go about four back. Might have to stretch it out to five back, but we shall see. This is a good starting place anyway. I'm going to remove my skein so I can move the swift to get to the other side. All right. So let's see how this goes. All right. And there are my two ends. So I'm going to remember it's on that side and I'm not having to get up to, so this little part was coming undone. I'm going to gently move it back. There's still a little bit of slack here and it helps keep things together if it's pretty taut, not to mention that helps with your ball when you're winding it, if you have good tension on your yarn. So we're going to move it back to this fifth peg hole. And there we go. All right. Now that is a little bit, I've got one in the fourth, but I still think I'd rather have it that way and keep it taut. So we are going to leave it. Technically, I think you're supposed to keep them all in the same peg, but life is not perfect. So now that I actually have the skein ready to go on my swift. I'm going to cut these pieces that were holding it together. Let's see. There we go. And this was a nice yarn that only had two of these, one of which was holding the ends together. So we're going to snip the one that's keeping the skein together. And then we're going to cut these two ends apart as close to the knot as possible to avoid loss of yardage because this is precious. All right. I'm going to do that. All right. So now the fun part. Let's hook it up to the ball winder. So you're going to take your thread and your yarn and put it, I kind of like to wind it around. So I'm going to show that again. You're going to go underneath and then underneath again, the little corkscrew on your yarn winder. And then I still like to hold a little bit of tension on my yarn when I'm winding my ball, especially when you're getting it started. And there you go. There we go. So to finish off, you just take your ball off of your winder and I like to tuck this in and I know people love to use these winders as center pulls. I still like to take it from the outside of this game because then when I have to frog something it's a lot easier to wind it back on the ball. All right. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this demonstration of the Amish Swift. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and let us know in the comments what you prefer. Do you prefer an umbrella Swift or do you prefer the Amish style like this? Or is there a different kind that you prefer to have? And before we go, I want to say thank you to my husband who is currently getting B-roll. So all those shots where we get closer in detail are thanks to him. And I will catch you next time. Bye.